Well, hello there, my friends, and welcome back to the Scott Re project. Now, two weeks ago, I did a video using this stuff, meat glue, transglutaminase. Now, it was my first time experimenting with this stuff, so I decided to fuse two pheasant breasts together with some black pudding in the middle, wrapped in bacon, but I wasn't quite convinced that you know, I got it right. But since then, I have perfected the recipe and I wanna share it with you. This is what I'm gonna call a pheasant roulade and I'm gonna show you how to make it. Now, using meat glue, obviously I put it on Facebook, put it on YouTube, wasn't sure what kind of reaction I was gonna get, but it was very, very positive. Now, a lot of people said, oh, well, you know, it could be used in nefarious ways, which, you know, it can be, but that is not what I'm using it for. I think used in its proper context, creatively, I think it's a good bit of kit. Anyway, what I'm gonna do then is show you my new revamped pheasant roulade. I'm gonna do one with the meat glue and one au naturel. And we will see, you know, the difference. Obviously, the meat glue is gonna give us a perfect seal, no seams. I mean, the natural one might behave just the same. So what we'll do is we'll make one of each, the whole process, we'll cook it off, slice into it, and then see, you know, the outcome. It may be that they're both just as good as each other and you don't need the meat glue, but hey ho we will see. Right, the first thing we need to do then is, with our pheasant breasts, I've got two here. Well, three, but I'm only gonna use two. I'm just gonna take off the tenderloin. Now in my last video, obviously I used two breasts together. I figured out that I think it works better with just one breast. Better presentation, not so bulky, and just looks all round a lot better. So what I'm gonna do is just on a piece of cling film, just like that, gently bat it out. Try and get an even shape, not going too mad just trying to make basically a square out of this beautiful beautiful pheasant breast trying not to go through so just take your time so have a look at that that's lovely just want to bat out this end here just bring that corner round as you can see it's spreading very nicely and I will repeat with t'other one and it wants to look something like that schnitzel styly so that is that one nicely batted out that gives us a lovely blank canvas all I'm going to do just being fussy is just square it up. Obviously don't go to waste, you can save this up, put it in a stock or just put a pan on real hot, get it in there and eat it or give it to your dog. So there we have our two flattened out pheasant breasts. What I wanna do is just to add some flavor. Obviously there's gonna be bacon wrapped around it so we don't wanna go too mad, but I'm just gonna salt and pepper the inside of each one. So with the natural one, I'm just going to put my sausage meat there inside and just roll it up. That's our natural one. I'll come back to that one in a moment. Next, some streaky bacon. I'm just going to thin it out a little bit. Obviously you could use prosciutto, whatever you desire. So on that join, just gonna start, just like making a pigs in blanket, just gently wrapping it up. Now I've got smoked streaky here, I think adding another flavor layer. I mean, so far I've made two or three of these and they are absolutely outstanding 
and they look pretty neat too because you get a perfect, perfect circle of pheasant and then you get a perfect little round of sausage meat in it and it's just pretty cool, full stop. So there we have, oh natural, no meat glue, we're not messing with nature, one beautiful little pheasant roulade. So what I will do next then, as per usual, I'm going to wrap it as tight as possible in my cling film, give it a bit of pressure. As you can see there, I'm pulling on that cling film to get it nice and taut. Take that out the way. Now that is what we'll do. Get the air out, also get our basic shape and then start alternately twisting. Give it a helping hand on the block. And you can really start to see the shape that is going to become. Let's have a look at that. I think I'll take that a little bit more. And I'm just going to put that to one side and we will concentrate on the meat glue version. So I've got my retro vintage flower shaker. I mean, I just love old kit. I don't know what is wrong with me. I just think it's fantastic. It's called Recycling, that was a flower shaker. It's now a transglutaminase shaker. So I'm going to put a bit on my board. I've got my gloves on. I just wanna make sure I've got some covered on the bottom. And obviously, shake it baby. Shake it like a Polaroid picture. So, nice covering on there, again, Saucy son meat, sausage meat. Now I'm just gonna put a bit on there. Remember, this is tasteless. You won't taste anything, you won't even know. And then we're just gonna roll that up, make sure we've got a nice cover in there and a nice shape. And again, back to the old Strico. One, two, and three. Now, when I put this on Facebook, like I said, I wasn't sure what the reaction was gonna be. You know, I'm all about traditional methods, traditional ways, but like I said, you know, this has been fascinating me for a long while, you know? And I just had to give it a go, and to be quite honest, I think used properly, it's brilliant. But like anything in life, there is always gonna be a rogue element but that's entirely up to you. For me, things like this, brilliant. Okay, so we've got the glue on our streaky. Come on, Scott, sort it out, mate. So I'll start on that seam, bringing it in, bringing it round. There is one. So where that one left off, round. And the other good thing about this, this makes one pheasant breast go a long, long way. We've added that sausage meat, we've added the bacon. So what was maybe, what, a four to six ounce pheasant breast turns into a decent, a decent, a decent portion. Put your teeth back in, boy. Okay, so I just want to finish off that one end, which I think is here. Just give it a quick shufty, just to use up any remaining meat glue. And then, again, with our cling film, I take my gloves off now. Beautiful. So again, getting plenty of pressure on. Don't worry, that's not meat glue on me. It's cocaine, no it ain't. It's stuff <laughs> out of the gloves. So, nice and tight, nice and taut. A perfect, beautiful 
cylindrical shape like we did with the other manipulating it as we roll it up and again those edges getting any air out alternate twists and then along the block and again we are left with perfect cylinders so on that trowel meat glue I'm just going to vac pack these quickly now right time to vac pack this then now if you haven't got a vacuum packing machine just double up I think I'll cut that down get a stronger seal on the cling film and make sure it's properly sealed and that should work just fine but this is my latest toy I absolutely love it I don't know what I did without it to be honest for years and years and years I've struggled packing wrapping this is just a great bit of kit I shall put a link uh, in the comments this is from cool game and no this is not an advert and no I didn't get it for free I had to buy it but it's one of the best things I bought Anyway, I'll vac pack it quickly, making sure all that air is out. Stop the vac. We're left with one amazingly tight package. God, that don't sound right. So that was. Oh, natural. Brilliant. And this one, what should we call this one? I don't know. That'll do. Alchemy. Excellent. Okay then, so on to cooking these. I am going to cook these at 62 degrees C for 45 minutes. Now, Obviously, I'm going to be cooking these in my water bath, my sous vide machine, but don't worry if you haven't got a sous vide machine, just get some cold water on the stove top, put a thermometer in. I mean, you will have to stand over it for 45 minutes, which really, you know, isn't a long time. Have a cup of tea or a beer or whatever you want to do, but just make sure it doesn't go above 65. So, you know, it's not even a boil. It's just a lovely warm temperature. And, you know, I do understand that not... Uh, everybody has got a sous vide machine, a vat packer, but this can be done without all those crazy bits of kit, as much as I love them. Right, off to the water bath then. 62C, 45 minutes. Right, we'll go for meat glue first. Like I said, 62 degrees C for 45 minutes. That's the beauty of it. Look, look, it's all stayed in its own package. Be careful not to mix these up. Right. So obviously you're going to get a bit of liquid out of there. What was in the bacon? That one's held quite well, actually. Then the meat glue one. So let's just have a look at those close up. That's the meat glue one then. As you can see, just rolling it round, lovely joins, but that, in all fairness, is not too bad. I suppose the telltale will be when we fry these off, crisp this bacon up, so we'll get them in the pan and see how they behave, but so far, aren't they stunning really? Absolutely superb. Brilliant. Right, onto the stove. You can tell which one's the natural one, which is that one, slightly smaller than the meat glue. Good job, because at the moment, apart from a few flappy bits, there isn't a lot in it. So, some of my own lard, dripping, call it whatever you want. For years, we were tricked into thinking that butter, animal fats were bad for you. It's now been proven that it's better for you than some vegetable oils. Some of us already knew that, mind you, but hey ho. So, get a bit of heat in there. And all I wanna do is, cause it is completely cooked all the way through, just add some color, crisp that skin up, and then we'll cut into one. 
Like I said, uh, in my mind, I'm thinking maybe the natural one might unravel a little bit. As it's starting to just gently relax, you can see how that's perfectly sealed. But yay, I may be wrong. This is piggy overload into this beautiful lard or dripping. Now, the reason I colour my stuff in this wok is because you can get, I think, due to the sides, you can just prop it up against it. I think it's a great way to add colour. Okay then, here they are. Oh natural. I'm really impressed with that. Nothing holding it. Actually, very good. And obviously the meat glue, a bit of a tighter bond, but really not a lot in it. So I shall cut into these with my beautiful new knife, which somebody kindly sent me. Absolutely amazing. So let's always square the end off. Let's have a look at that. Mmm. Oh wow, it tastes so good. Mmm. Mmm. Just look at that. Of course, this one. Let's not waste that bit there. Tastes exactly the same. I'll tell you what. Looks bloody brilliant. Let's have a look at those. Well, there you go then. Don't they look magnificent? Obviously, the natural one, the meat glue, but to be honest, there really isn't a lot in this. And it just goes to prove that if you don't like the idea of meat glue, you know, you can still make these. And they are an absolutely amazing product. Just check that out, if I can show you. The beautiful sausage in the middle, that fantastic, super, super, super juicy pheasant, and that beautiful crisped up bacon on the outside. That, to me, is one of the best ways to dress up some of our fantastic seasonal game. I mean, it just looks an absolute picture and look how far this one breast portion will go imagine that just cut into these little roulades on a plate on some mashed potatoes some gravy some nice seasonal veg some beans something like that you have got a meal fit for a king absolutely brilliant well my dear friends i hope you enjoyed that episode of the scott reed project i really really enjoyed doing that one for you and look at the end result i think it's absolutely amazing and if you've liked what you've seen here today on the scott reed project please click subscribe down here somewhere also on my facebook the scott reed project go to the scott reed project like the page and you'll see all my latest videos posted and lots of other goodies in between and also on my Twitter at the Scott Ree Project. So until next time then, if you get yourself some pheasant breasts, please, please, please give this a go. Just have a look at that. Come on, hey, what's not to like? Come on, have a go. Just check out that bacon, you know you want to. Come on, open up. Mmm, beautiful.